inverse what we will be understanding and what we will be reading in this concept video. First we will understand the domain and range. Very important. We need to understand the domain and range of the inverse functions. A lot of the questions will be solved directly if you know the domain and range. Okay. And a lot of students they have difficulty sir I am not able to memorize the domain and range part. It's very complicated. I will give you a short trick how to memorize the domain and range so that you don't forget ever in your lifetime okay next is the properties now we have few idf properties which are very important and one property i'll tell you which is like the most important and with that property almost most of the 80 percent of the questions will be solved and then applications how do we apply once we know that property how do we apply that property that is important now first the basic of the inverse which every student should know is if a function I have from A to B, okay, then the function's inverse only exists if it follows this condition, if it has to be a bijective function. A lot of, a lot of students who haven't watched the video regarding the relation and functions, go watch it. There we have discussed in details what is a bijective function. But here we are just giving you a synopsis that a bijective function is nothing but 1-1 one, one onto function, okay. It's a 1 1 onto function, and what is a 1 1? Means one of the object is associated with one image, okay. And onto means codomain is equal to range. This is the basic recap, okay. So the inverse of a function it exists if it follows these two conditions it has to be 1 1, it has to be onto, okay. Now we know we are dealing with not of normal inverse functions, but here we are talking mostly about the trigonometric inverse functions now we know all the trigonometrical functions they are many one okay for one value of x we get multiple values like for x equal to half for y is equal to half half is paired with this what you say one value here one value here again one value here one value here so we already know that multiple values exist so we needed to restrict the domain and codomain to make them one one and on two then only the inverse of that function will exist okay so we needed to do that. That's why we'll show you how for the inverse of sine inverse x, how we have restricted the domain and from the sine x, we got the domain and range for the sine inverse x, okay? Now let's understand basically, what do you mean by a function's inverse? So a function's inverse is what? It starts from a to b. Let's say a function is from a to b. a to b means what? a is the domain part and b is the range part, correct? a is the domain, domain means the x values. Domain means if you don't remember the x values and range means after putting the x what you are getting the y values okay. Now g is a function which is from b to a okay. Here the domain of g is what this one b the first one and the range of this one is a. Now if you remember student then you remember then you should understand if fog equal to golf we did composite function correct. If fog is equal to Goff, means basically you see with a simple example, normal number, if I multiply these two, what I'll get? 1. And if I do the opposite also, will I get 1? So these two are inverse of each other. Same thing in terms of function, we're talking about in terms of fog and Goff. Nothing more than that. So no need to be uh, too much afraid of, okay? So we won't be using any of this. But just for the understanding, you should understand. So inverse what happens, if I'm finding the inverse of f, what will happen? the domain will change it to the range and the range will change to the domain that's it you need to understand this much what the domain of this function will convert to range and the range of this function will convert to the domain okay clear the domain and range of six important inverse functions now sine inverse x it is from minus one to one cos inverse again from minus one to one so the values what you're putting here, now you'll say sir, what are these values? See sine inverse x. Now these are the values of x. x is from where? From minus 1 it can start until 1 it will go. Close brackets, okay? So you should remember that, okay? It's very, very, very important. Now a lot of places you'll see tan inverse x is from where to where student? Minus infinity to infinity. A lot of places it will be written r, same thing, all real numbers, okay? Now, sec inverse x is from minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity okay pretty simple same thing cosec also 
minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity okay so these are the domain and this is the range of the function means what do you mean by the range if in sine inverse x if i start putting a values from minus 1 to 1 okay i'll be able to get y is equal to sine inverse x from where to where from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 okay and the next very important thing is this range is important okay this range is also also known as the principal value branch okay the principal value branch and almost all the questions will be solved if you know the range part okay all the questions will be solved if you know the range part now how do we remember sir how do we remember range it is looks it looks very complicated so what we do we'll do a group we'll make a group a group of sine inverse tan inverse and cosec inverse okay so we made a group of sine inverse tan inverse and cosec inverse see all of this range lies from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 almost which is in the first and fourth quadrant first and fourth okay now only few things is here it is closed because sine is defined for minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and here it is open because at pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 it is not defined so you should remember that okay and again here what is happening it is defined at minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 but not defined at 0 so that's why 0 is removed okay from this part 0 is removed so what they all have in common minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 what they have in common minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 you can write this that one is close bracket one is open bracket and the other is close bracket okay but except minus 0 correct see so easily we remembered no sine inverse x tan inverse x and cosecant inverse x so easy it was now come to the group 2 where we have cos inverse x cot inverse x and sec secant inverse x or sec inverse x okay so in this case they all lie in the first and second quadrant 0 to pi 0 to pi again you will say sir 0 to what you say pi leaving pi by 2 okay so these all three they lie from one is close bracket 0 to pi open bracket 0 to pi other is also close bracket 0 to pi minus pi by 2 the middlemost value that's it clear so everybody now i think so nobody will have a doubt sir how to memorize how to keep it in mind now you can easily understand the first three functions sin inverse uh, tan inverse and cosecant inverse they lie in the range of what is your first and fourth minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 first and fourth quadrant and the other functions cos inverse cot inverse and what is the second inverse they lie in the group of first and second quadrant 0 to pi clear everybody okay now what we have done in order to explain you the inverse how do we get the inverse we have just shown for one function and the rest all we have just written the domain and range so what we have done is see you already know the graph of sin x correct let's say it is coming like this going 0 and then going like this like this doing okay now what you have done see if you see from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 none of the values are repeating correct now somebody will say sir what if i take from 0 to sir pi sir see here values are repeating okay correct it's not one one it's many one okay so we have taken a simplest branch from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 we got the graph of sin x okay we got sin x from where to where mm, minus pi by 2 domain is what minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and the range values maximum minimum is minus one maximum is this one so this is the domain this is the uh, this is the range this is the domain we got it okay now what we did in order to find the graph of sine inverse what we do we first plot sine x and then with y is equal to x line y is equal to x line we take a mirror image so what you'll get you'll get the graph like this okay one graph sine in sine x is this inverse will be just a mirror image of that okay that is sine inverse and what I told you, whenever we do inverse, the domain will be converted to range here. See here, the domain is converted to, the domain, this domain is converted to the range here in the inverse. And this range is converted to the domain. That's it. Nothing more than that. Okay. We just wanted to make you understand. And we restricted the domain. What is the reason? You should know that. It is because to make it 1, 1 and all 2. Nothing more than that. Okay. Next is the properties of inverse trigonometric function very important 
sin inverse of sin means it gets cancelled when when it's in the principal value branch okay when x is from where to where minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so you should remember this okay so x is from where to where minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 okay cos inverse 0 to pi tan inverse minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 but open bracket student cot 0 to pi again open bracket see a lot of the formulas a lot of students sir these all values sir the last ones it's very tough to mug up it's the same thing it's a range only okay nothing is there and i told you how to mug up the range how to get the range see we already know sine inverse tan inverse and cosecant inverse what are you gonna do sine will be what minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 tan will be same thing but open bracket because it is not defined at pi by 2 student cot is same thing minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 close bracket but in between value it doesn't take that is zero correct done same thing cos cot and cosec we can also do cos inverse x cot inverse x and what is a secant inverse x cos is nothing from 0 to pi close bracket cot is open bracket 0 to pi and secant is nothing but close bracket 0 to pi minus pi by 2 that's it student so nothing more than that you, if you understand this much a lot of things this one is like important property second now sine of sine inverse x if i do so it is what is it these are all the domain students okay so i already told you domain of this is what cos inverse sine inverse you already know one will be minus one to one minus one to one real number real number and then for the set r minus minus one to one r minus minus one to one so domain is very this is not very important okay but okay you can understand it you can memorize it but not very important okay now this again important not that much but yeah a bit important okay so these formulas i'm not going much in details like derivation and all that that will cover in the pu part but as of now you can go through this formulas okay now next this formula is important why because in which case it will be just minus and which case it will be pi minus cos inverse you need to know see cos cot and what is this like these three groups the group 2 f ones they all will be pi minus and group 1 sin inverse tan inverse and cosecant inverse they will be just minus okay what a minus clear that's it this is the most important property for kcet student okay this property is the most and the most important property so understand very properly okay how do you use we use it like a lot of time they'll say sin inverse x plus cos inverse x okay uh, let's say 2 cos inverse x is lying from a to b okay now you'll be like scared sir how will we do sir now what are you going to do we'll use sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is how much pi by 2 again plus cos inverse x so that will be from a to b now this whole part is pi by 2 so pi by 2 plus cos inverse x is from where to where a to b now easily just by putting the minimum and maximum value of what do you say let's say cos inverse x we can easily solve it so a lot of questions you need to and they'll each time they'll use the same thing okay so do go through this one very very important for the kct point of view okay a lot of questions each year will show you 2015 14 16 like that 2019 similar concepts okay next this formula you can go through you can keep it in mind also what is important here is this part if it is here plus here will be minus if it is here minus here will be plus now all the trigger formulas are also important which i gave you okay so that is very important and that should be on your fingertips so that whenever this they are mixing something with trigo we are able to use that and make it or solve it in a very fast way now this also formula is important 2 tan inverse x in terms of sine in terms of cos in terms of tan we'll see we'll try to solve without using this formula also in a faster way but still the formulas are important so you need to go through this okay so these are the basic formulas that you need apart from that these are the basic formulas that you need apart from that almost is done so go through all the formulas write them again and again so that you get a very good practice okay and the formulas are your on your fingertips 
and it doesn't become too difficult for you to recall it okay the more and more you revise the more easier it will be i'll show you how to solve in the pyq section okay we'll just start in like one minute okay how to solve the questions in much smaller way much simpler way i'll try to give you for each question minimum one maximum two to three methods where substituting values are like different different approaches we thought of and we can solve it in a much faster manner okay that's it